A boost converter is a type of DC-DC converter that converts a lower voltage to a higher voltage. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the basic operational concepts of a boost converter. I'm also going to be talking about, um, or showing rather, some of the circuit waveforms for various components in this circuit. And then we're also going to be doing some circuit analysis. So we'll be breaking down you know, different sections of the circuit and explaining how they work. And multiple phases and stuff like that so before we go any further um, please remember to like and subscribe that helps my channel out a ton um, also feel free to drop a comment down if you have any questions throughout the entire video or any comments you want to give me on you know stuff you like stuff you don't like that also is really appreciated um, also please be sure to watch this video until the very end because at the very end I'm gonna be showing a variation of the boost converter that I think is important to know as well and I'll kind of give you know some brief comments on that. So now with all that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. So looking at the boost converter right here, um, we have the basic schematic that I just pulled off the internet and then I went ahead and added in a voltage source and a load resistor or a resistor that's just supposed to represent the load in this case. And I thought this is just easier um, to have these here. So it's, to me, it makes the explanation much clearer. Um, then the next important parts I have kind of labeled here are looking here we Q1 is the MOSFET we have L1 is our inductor which is actually kind of what this entire the inductor is sort of like the center stage in this circuit right it's a lot like the boost converter but a little bit different and I'll explain how then we have our in input capacitor which is CI right here then we have our rectifier diode which is D1 right here. And then we have the output capacitor, which is C sub O, I guess we call it CO right here. Um, so the key concept, the major key concept for a boost converter is going to be that inductors like to maintain a constant current through them, meaning they will resist any changes in current, either increasing or decreasing. So if you have one amp flowing through this this inductor right here and you just pull the plug on it it's going to try to it's going to start trying to supply current it's going to act like a, a battery or a current source it's going to start acting like a current source and try to supply you know the continuing try to continue supplying that one amp of current to the rest of the circuit that's just that's just kind of how they work okay so the best way to, I think, explain how boost converters work is to break them down into two phases or two conditions. Condition one is when the switch is closed. So when the switch is closed, if you look here in the circuit, I have this little green uh, box or it's not, don't think of a box, but this green uh, line, this green line that highlights the direction of current flow and where it's present in the circuit. So whenever the, circ the switch is closed, whenever the MOSFET is conducting, current it comes it starts at the voltage source goes through our inductor and then it completely circumvents the rest of the circuit and goes down through our MOSFET and then returns through our voltage source right here right so we're completely circumventing the rest of the circuit and during this phase it is it uh current through the inductor ramps up linearly so this should look pretty familiar if you've seen some of the other uh, circuit analysis I've done on my channel where I explain how where I show how current through an inductor behaves so it just looks like a, a straight line we'll actually look at it in a second with some waveforms so it's current through the inductor is going to ramp up linearly during this time and the inductor is considered to be charging in this phase right so we have uh, energy is being built up in this inductor in the form of its magnetic field during this time and there's there's nothing well, not that there's nothing going on on the other side. We'll talk about what's going on on the other side um, next, actually. So here I have like a little circuit waveform where I've taken three of the, the major components that we want to look at in this circuit. We're kind of see what's going on in them. So T1 is when the switch is closed, right? So this is going from nothing to the switch is originally closed. So here we can clearly see this is current through the inductor is ramping up. Kind of like what I mentioned before, linearly, so it's just a straight line up. And this is this is because you know how inductors behave is they're resisting change to any type of current. So before, um, 
the switch was closed, there was no current flowing through the inductor or at time equals zero, right? Before this battery source was, this voltage source was hooked up, there was no current flowing through the inductor, right? So it's gonna ramp up from, from I min or zero, depending on where it started. And it's just gonna reach to its, its I max value. So current through Q1, of course, we know Q1 is conducting. So this green arrow, this green line goes directly through Q1, which makes perfect sense. It, this, this matches up perfectly with what this, this diagram has, has, us, has drawn on here. Um, so again, we're focusing on just T1 here. Uh, so again, current through Q1 is also going to ramp up linearly because it's in series with our inductor. And so we know that, that current in series is the same everywhere throughout the circuit. And then we have current through D1 and it's at zero amps, right? So again, makes perfect sense with the, the way the diagram is drawn. There is no current flowing through the diode at this time. And that's what is reflected in the graph. So continuing on is the next condition is when the switch is open, right? So that means when this MOSFET is open, that means there is no current is able to flow through it because it's not, it's not conducting. So this is just, think of this as an open circuit right here. So there's, there's nothing going on here, which means the only other path current can flow to return to complete the circuit is through the diode, right? So here we have starting at our voltage source, we are going up and through our inductor, then we're going through the diode, and then we're going through our load. And then we're swinging all the way back around and completing the circuit through the negative terminal of our voltage source. So during this time, the current through the inductor ramps down because um, the, the, we're trying to maintain, so think of it like this, where the reason why the current through the inductor ramps down is because Let's say this voltage source is only, you know, five volts right here, but we'd say we're our, our ideal, um, like what our, our target voltage drop across RL is like 10 volts or something like that, right? That means this inductor has to supply an additional five volts. So this inductor has to act like another five volt battery, right? And so in order to do that, it is going to it is going to um, supply current, right? Hopefully that makes that part makes sense. Um, because so because our battery can't supply the full the full ten volts we need, it, the inductors is is the one picking up the slack there, and so that means it's going to use up some of the energy that it had stored in it during this time, and that's what's that's where the additional five volts comes from. And that's basically kind of how how it works. And so um, that's why in this phase, the inductor is considered to be discharging. So that's why also we'll see if we're going down to these graphs here in T2, the current is going to start ramping down linearly. And this is because the inductor can't supply current indefinitely, right? So it's, it's using up all of its juice in order to try to keep the, the current flowing at the same rate, right? Um, looking at the current through Q1. Again, this makes perfect sense. We're going, we're not even passing through Q1 at all in this diagram. So there's zero current through Q1. And then looking at, at D1, then we have the same story where we have, see the red air, the red line crosses through it. So there's gonna be current flowing through it. And it's going to be the same current waveform as our inductor. So we'll look at that, it matches perfectly, exactly the same. And so I said like T2 is when the switch is closed. So we're paying attention to T2 and all of these. So hopefully that makes perfect sense. Like I said, drop a comment below if you need some further explanation for this. I'm probably gonna make a part two to kind of um, explain this from a different angle. I think that could be very helpful. So I'll probably end up doing that as well. So stay tuned for a part two as well. Um, so there's only a few comments I have on this. And so that is gonna be the purpose of the input and output capacitors are for smoothing purposes. So looking here, we have the input and output capacitors. And then looking at this waveform, this is a triangle wave, right? What, what we're trying to do is, is convert DC to another DC, you know, uh, direct current source. So we want this to be, you know, flat and steady. And so that's the whole purpose of the input and output capacitors or try to smooth it and make it as DC as possible. And so that's the whole purpose of the, the capacitors in the circuit. Um, 
Okay, think about the purpose of the diode. So we want to direct the current from the output capacitor. So going back to here, so during this phase of our operation, the only thing supplying current to the load is going to be our output capacitor. There's no other, there's nothing else that, that's doing it when the inductor is charging. No current is flowing through this diode at all. So the only thing left to do it is, is the, the capacitor, right? Um, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to use this diode because say this diode wasn't here, this is just a short to ground then, right? So that means that all the current in the capacitor would then just go literally from here and just go around and, and, and loop right through there and completely bypass this load right here. So we don't want that to happen. We want the only possible way for current to flow is, is this way. So we are using this diode to direct current flow. That's the whole purpose of the diode in, in this circuit. Um, so continuing on, let's see. So yeah, we wanna route it through the load. The capacitor is discharging when the switch is closed. So that's another thing to note is that when the switch is closed, that is when the capacitor is discharging. And that's also why I mentioned, so that, that, that make, makes perfect sense as well, because if the switch is closed, that gives the pathway to ground right here. That gives the short to ground. Because if this circuit is open, then there's no problem. Here, right there's no path to ground except for here um, however when you know when the switch is closed it's like I said it's a short to ground so we need to have this diode here to prevent any current from flowing through our MOSFET from our capacitor so hopefully that makes perfect sense and so now the last thing I want to talk about is a variation of the boost converter known as a synchronous boost converter so if you look at this circuit um, you google it you'll see it's it's also referred to as an asynchronous or non-synchronous boost converter meaning that they just have only one switching element right here and then with the synchronous boost converter we have replaced so looking at this uh circuit right here so this diode right here has been replaced with another mosfet so um, due to the forward voltage drop of the diode, an engineer might opt for a MOSFET instead of the rectifier diode. So as we know, uh, diodes have a forward voltage drop, and so diodes end up dissipating a decent amount of power, um, especially depending on the higher current levels, right? So what can end up happening is, for one, you have a lot of you have a lot of heat problems, and then two, you have like a lot of you have losses in efficiency because your your diode is is dissipating a lot of that power. If it's having to conduct a lot of current so that's one reason why you might opt for a, a synchronous boost converter so the increase in efficiency comes with a higher bomb cost and more complexity so that's one downside to a synchronous boost converter is so the things that control these two mosfets are referred to as just buck controllers um, or just ic's people call them chips whatever you have to get a more complicated chip that can control two mosfets at the same time right versus Imagine the MOSFET that's for this circuit right here. You only have controlling one thing and you're only taking feedback from one area, right? So, and we'll get into some examples of buck converters later. So we'll, we'll see those, which will be great. Um, so that's just a downside. It's more complex and the bomb cost is usually higher because you have to actually have another MOSFET and then the chip that you're using to control this is probably going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, so there's just some downsides. But at higher power requirements, this could, this could end up paying off, right? Because if, if you're having problems, so I said higher power requirements, you'll have a lot more heat dissipation on that, that rectifier diode. And then you also have losses in efficiency. So if those are two of your, those two things are really important for your project, then you, um, you know, a synchronous boost converter might, you know, be a better choice. So that's pretty much all I have to say about boost converters. Um, like I said, drop a comment if you have any questions down below, if you have any other uh, things related to electro electrical engineering that you want me to cover any topics like I don't know like a two uh, like a forward converter or something like that or other power supply topologies or you want me to cover a type of sensor or integrated circuit just drop it down below and I will do a video on it and uh, thank you so much if you made it to the end of the video and hopefully I will see you in the next one